everybody and welcome to the latest Blossom Crochet tutorial. First and foremost, if you don't follow my channel already, then make sure you hit that subscribe button now and also press the little bell reminder so that you will get a notification every time a new video goes live. In this particular one, I'm going to be showing you how to make a beautiful multicoloured granny square blanket. So I'm going to be doing it so that it changes colour every single round. This is a request that I've had numerous times now so I thought it was about time I got round to doing it. So in the tutorial we will be completing the first three rounds of this together and then hopefully you'll be able to re-watch round three over and over again as many times as you need to make your square as big as you want it to be. You can obviously use it for tiny squares or you can use them for bigger squares like these or you can use it to make one absolutely huge granny square blanket. There is also a part in this tutorial where I show you what to do with your ends so if you are a complete beginner hopefully that section will be useful for you as well. It is a square where we will be turning every single round and you can see that will help it to stay absolutely perfectly square for you. But I will leave all of the information regarding the yarn that I'm particularly the particular shades that I'm using just in case anybody wants to know. I will leave lots and lots of relevant information in that description box so make sure you press that little arrow at the side to get all that extra info. So I'm literally just going to be using some odds and ends of Shapey's Colour Crafter that I've got lying around and obviously you will be using whatever colours you need to but these are just some scraps but I know people always like to know what it is that I'm using. So one thing that you are going to need to remember with this tutorial, if you are using this with my normal seamless granny square technique, then you won't be chaining anything in between your granny clusters. However, if you're wanting to use this granny square um, in conjunction with any of the pick and mix granny square series that's on my channel, then you will need to do a chain one in between your granny clusters. So in the tutorial I won't be doing the chain one but please remember as I say if you're doing this to use in conjunction with any of the squares from the Pick and Mix Granny series then you do need to chain one in between your granny clusters on the straight edge. So as always with a granny square we're going to start with the slip knot on the hook and you want to start with a chain four so yarn over and pull through that's one, two, three and four. We're then going to slip stitch into that very first chain to create a circle. So insert your hook through the first chain, yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And as always we've got that lovely little centre circle to work into. We're going to chain two and that is going to count as our first treble. Now please remember I am working in UK terminology here so in the US that is your double crochet. So we now want to do two UK treble crochets into that centre ring so you want to yarn over, insert into that centre circle, yarn over and pull up. At this point you should have your three loops on the hook, yarn over pull through the first two loops, yarn over pull through the second two loops. And one more time, yarn over, insert back into that centre ring, yarn over and pull up, you have the three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that is our first granny cluster. To create a corner you want to chain two and then back into that centre ring now you're going to do another granny cluster. So you're going to do three trebles, so yarn over and then yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two and two more. So all these stitches are worked into that centre ring. So that's our three trebles, so that's our next granny cluster. Again create the corner with a chain two and you're going to do that two more times so you want two more granny clusters. So yarn over again and complete your three trebles. So you can always pause if you need to. 
to keep up. That's two and three. Chain two for that corner and then you want one final granny cluster. So three trebles once more. One, two, and three. Now you must always remember to create your final corner. So you want to do a chain two again, and then you're going to slip stitch to the top of that beginning chain two. So you can see we've got one, two stitches. So you want to insert your hook through that top stitch and slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through both. So this tutorial, we're obviously going to be changing color every single round. So you want to do a chain one and snip off and just pull that hook out, taking the tail with you. So at this point, you will probably want to sew in your ends. It just makes it much easier for you when starting the next part. So that is our very beginning. So I'm going to bring along my new colour now. And you want to start with a slip knot on your hook. Because we're going to start with a standing treble crochet. So if you prefer, you can join your yarn in the corner and chain up but I prefer when I'm joining yarn to use standing stitches. So this first one is facing me now as it was when I fastened off but as with my granny squares when I'm doing the seamless ones I'm actually going to turn that around now so I've got the back facing me and that just by turning each round it just ensures that your square stays perfectly square basically. So I've turned that around, I'm just going to pop it down for a second. And to do a standing stitch, you want to yarn over, because obviously we're doing a standing treble. So yarn over and just hold that with your fingers and bring back the square. I'm going to insert my hook through one of the corner spaces. I'm going to yarn over and pull up. And you can see there, I've got three loops on my hook and you'll do a treble as normal so yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two so you have got a proper treble there we haven't got a chain and we want to do two more trebles into this chain space so yarn over go back into that same chain space and do two more trebles so one and Two. Now at this point remember as I said before if you're doing this to combine with the 50-50 granny square series then it's at this point that you would need to put your chain one in between your clusters. But however I'm sticking with my ordinary granny and I'm going to jump straight across to this next chain two corner space and I'm going to do my three trebles. So one two and three. We want to create the new corner by chaining two and then back into that very same chain space we're going to do another granny cluster so another three trebles so one two and three again jump across to your next corner space and do your three trebles. Two and three. Create your corner with a chain two and back in that chain space you'll do another granny cluster. So your three trebles. Two and three. And you've probably guessed we're going to just repeat that all the way around. So granny cluster, chain two, oops, 
and granny cluster all in the corner spaces. And I'm pretty much back where we started from now so you can see we've got that colour where we started here but we have only completed half of that corner at the moment so we need to complete the other half so you want to do a granny cluster so one two and three and as always remember to do that final chain two to create that final corner and then you're going to slip stitch into the top of that standing treble crochet that we did at the beginning of the round however if you attached and did a chain two then you'll just attach a uh, slip stitch to the top of the chain two so slip stitch chain one snip off i always think you're very brave if you're doing um a multi-colored square granny square blanket because the amount of ends that you get on these squares is quite impressive. So again I'll just show you one final round now and again you're going to start with a slip knot on your hook and at this point again you want to turn your work around so that the back of the previous row is facing you. Again this just helps to keep things nice and square yarn over and we're going to insert our hook through yarn over and pull up again you've got three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two so again we've got a standing treble and in the exact same way as last time you'll do two more trebles into this corner space so one and two and then we're going to go straight into this space between our granny clusters so you can see we've got granny clusters either side here and then that space there and you want to do one granny cluster because this is our straight edge now two and three and then you should be jumping across into your first corner space so granny cluster chain two and granny cluster back into that same chain space And again into the space between your granny clusters on the straight edge you'll do one granny cluster two and three trebles and then again you're at your corner so granny cluster three chain two and granny cluster back into that same space. So you should be able to now, if you need to, rewind or pause and work the rest of the way around your square. But I will meet you back now when I'm ready to join at the end of this round. But to be fair, I'll probably just stick with you because obviously I'm very near to completion on this one so again as with the previous row we have got one half of that corner complete so we want to finish off with a granny cluster in that corner space You're going to chain two, never forget that, and then slip stitch to close in the top of that very first stitch. Chain one, snip off, and pull that through. So you can use that now 
over and over again to create small squares, big squares, or even just one huge, massive granny square blanket where you would change colour every round. So I really do hope that that tutorial has been helpful for you. I'm just going to grab my darning needle now and I'm going to weave in a few of these ends. Okay, so I'll just weave in a couple of these now so that you know exactly what to do if you're an absolute beginner. So I've threaded up obviously my centre one first of all and I'm just going to follow the direction round of the centre ring. So I'm going to go underneath the base of those trebles and again on this side and one final time. I'm going to give that a little tug, it just closes up that centre circle a little bit and snip off and then I will go to this next one and when it comes to granny squares and things I personally like to thread down the treble stitch and into the base of the treble so you might be able to see a little bit better on the next one that I do because it will be on a different type of stitch but I'm literally just going to thread that down again and I'm going to go around this centre circle purely because obviously it's the same colour as what I started with and snip off to be fair, you'll probably spend just as long weaving in ends as you do actually making your squares. And so this one I might be able to show you a little bit better what I mean about working along the base of the trebles. So I've attached for the mustardy barley colour and I'm going to weave down through that treble where it's attached to. So I'm going to weave down that stitch first of all. And then I'm going to go along the base of the trebles in that colour. And then I'm going to turn it back around and I'm going to catch slightly different parts of the stitch and work back along there and along the other half of that corner as well. And then I'll snip that one off. But I'm going to finish off sewing in these ends and also work up just a few more rounds.